Good morning, sports fans. Welcome back to the channel. I am Sadi, and this is lesson three of Fusion Particle Tutorials. In this tutorial, we're going to start by creating this and then turn it into this. Before we continue, make sure you've watched lesson one and two and have downloaded those comps and worked with all the controls we covered so far. If you're a beginner, you can practice with those comps and change the settings to create your own visuals. That'll give you some familiarity with the nodes and the controls to continue on to the next set of skills. In this lesson three, we're going to learn to add a light leak effect, use a custom bitmap image as our sprites, adapt the free template to our needs, for example, turn a Christmas theme into a birthday theme, and learn to add titles to customize the comp. Sounds good? All right, let's fire it up. First, let's go ahead and grab our free template and the Fusion code from the description of the video. We're going to be working with episode 7 from the free Fusion Backgrounds playlist. In the description of the video, you'll find a link to the video as well as the source code. Let's go ahead and grab the video file as well as the source code. Remember, the source code is in simple text form, so you can just copy and paste it into a simple text file on your own computer. The video file is a simple QuickTime file, so you can use it in DaVinci Resolve or in any other software of your own choice. This is episode seven of the free Fusion background templates. This is the project that we will be working with today. Let's go ahead and open up the source code in Fusion and take a quick bird's eye view of the comp so we know what we're dealing with. Most of this comp is very similar to what we've already covered in lesson two. Some noise in the background, a tiny particle system, a medium system, and then there's the large particle system here. There's some color fix to polish it off. I'll move quickly through the familiar parts of the comp and go into detail with the new stuff. There's two new techniques to learn here. The first is the light leak footage that will give it some depth and character to the image, and adding custom bitmap images from a sequence to use as a particle sprite. Let's start over and build this from scratch. If you miss a step, don't worry, you can always look at my notes in my comp and see what values they use. First, we're going to create a background node. Let's go ahead and show toolbar, and you can grab a background from here, view it in Viewer 2. Open up the inspector, and let's give it a green color. Next, we're going to add a background clip to our comp to give it some character. I'm going to use a clip from the brand new Corona pack from the Element Supply Company. These were filmed by Workbench. Check them out on YouTube. These are high quality clips shot on a red camera to add depth to your frame, and they come in UHD 4K resolution with a ton of flexibility to grade. You can buy these directly from Element Supply. I'll leave a link in the description. Full disclosure, I received a pre-release review copy from the author for free, and now I use these in almost everything I do. Click on Media Pool and Import Media. Choose whatever footage you want to composite. I'm going to use the Corona red footage. Bring this in. And this will create a media in node for you. Attach the output of the media to the output of the background node, and this will automatically create a merge for you. Let's go ahead and view the media in on viewer one. And that's what that looks like. Let's go ahead and play it. We can click on the loop button because the comp that we're working on is 60 seconds long and it's longer than the footage, so the footage can go ahead and loop itself. Now, interestingly, if you look at the top of the video file, you can see the resolution and the half float color detail over here. This is in 4K, whereas my comp is in 1920. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Shift Spacebar and resize. I'm going to bring in a resize node here, and this will resize the Corona footage to match my comp, which is 1920. Now this is playing on top of my green footage. I can go into the merge, change the apply mode to screen, and I can tweak the blend value to suit my needs. So if you're coming from a layer-based editor such as Photoshop or After Effects, think of the background being the bottom layer, 
and the footage being the top layer. Next, let's add some noise. You can click on this button here to create some fast noise, or you can hit Shift Spacebar FN, and that will also do the same thing. Let's go ahead and hit one on our viewer to look at the fast noise on this side. Go ahead and connect the output of the fast noise to the output of the merge, and this will automatically create another merge for you. So now the fast noise is on top, and then the background and the footage is on the bottom. Let's quickly tweak the fast noise parameters a little bit before we move forward. So now you can see it's moving a little bit. Let's go to color and choose two green values, a light green and a dark green. Now in this merge with the fast noise, adjust the blend opacity to your liking. Next, we're going to create another merge, MRG. Particles can be created with the P emitter. You can click here and the renderer node, which is right here. Let's go ahead and rename this by hitting F2, and I'm going to call it Tiny Particles. Let's click on the merge and hit 2 on the viewer to pull them up. Now, by default, the particles are created in a spherical region right in the middle, and there's no movement. Let's go ahead and change that real quick. I'm going to go into the region tab and choose all so the particles can be created all over. I'm going to go into style and change this to blob. And then I'm going to go ahead and increase the size. And give it a bit of fade. Now, as I'm working, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the noise and the footage so it doesn't slow down my computer. Let's go to the first tab. I'm going to choose 25 number with 15 variation and 200 life. This will give me 25 new particles per frame, with 15 being the variance. And each particle will be alive and in the scene for 200 frames. Now, these particles are standing still in their own positions, so I'm going to go ahead and give them some velocity. And I want them to move down, so I'll give them an angle of 270 and a variance of 45 degrees. Now, as you can see, the particles are falling down. Next, let's add some turbulence to these particles. To add a turbulence node, hit shift spacebar and type PTR or just turbulence and add that. Here's the turbulence node. Go ahead and hold down shift and bring it into the pipe and it'll automatically join. Turbulence will give these particles some uneven chaotic movement. The strength of each axis affects how much chaos we're causing to the particle movement. In this case, we just want the x-axis from side to side. We don't want the particles to move up or towards us. So let's go ahead and turn off Y and Z strength. And I want just a touch of X strength. So I'm going to go with 0 0.02. Down here, there's a density control. Density affects how fine and detailed those chaotic movements will be. In this case, because the turbulence is very small, the finesse of the turbulence should also be very small. So we'll leave it at 10. Let's move on to our medium particle system. Since it's very similar to our tiny system, we can copy and paste it and tweak it rather than create it from scratch. Choose all these nodes, copy, control V to paste. And now we have a second system. Let's go ahead and rename this to medium. Connect the merge to the background. Now that we've copied the tiny particles and made them into medium particles, let's go ahead and change some of the settings in the style. I'm going to choose Ngon. 
I'm going to leave the color to white and reduce the alpha. And I'm also going to reduce the alpha variance. For size, I'm going to choose much larger size. And I'm also going to give it some blur. And let's go ahead and hit Control P to turn on this merge and hit 2 to view the particles in the viewer. Okay, let's go ahead to number. Since the particles are much bigger, the number is going to be much smaller. Let's give it some velocity. And we're going to change the angle. Now for the fun part. Next, we're going to create the largest particle system and put it on top. But this time, we're going to learn how to use an image sequence as our sprites. So before we do that, let's quickly take a simple example and learn the concept. Let's move this to the side, create a new particle system, and a renderer. Now we have a simple particle system that's creating these default sprites. To change the sprite to a custom image, say a logo or fast noise as a sprite, you would change the style to bitmap and pipe in any image, and that would become the particle. Let's do that. Let's go to Particle, Style, Bitmap. Let's go to Media Pool, Import, and we're going to take this soccer ball. Okay, let's pull this in. Let's pipe this into the emitter. So now we have these soccer balls being emitted as the particle. But what if we wanted five different images or 10 different images? Let's go ahead to the media pool, import the others, football, basketball, and let's bring them in here. So now we have these different images that we want to pipe into the emitter, but the emitter is only taking one input of a bitmap. To add multiple images, you would create an image sequence. Here's how you do it. First, add a loader node by hitting Shift Spacebar Loader, or just LD, and then choose one of the images. Here you can add the first image of a sequence. As long as the images are numbered consistently, Fusion will treat them as one cohesive group, a single sequence rather than individual frames or or images. Let's choose B1. And notice the loader now says B hashtag, meaning B1, B2, B3, and so on. Click on the loop button on the loader, and let's pipe this in. We don't need these. So what's happening now is that the emitter will emit soccer balls on one frame, then a basketball on the next frame, and then the next ball will be on the next frame. This default behavior of the sequence is called over time. Click on the emitter, and here you can see that it says over time. Let's change this to particle birth time. This creates a particle in time from one of the images in the sequence. As the images are playing one frame at a time, the emitter is picking an image as a sprite on that frame. Let's change this number to one. So one image of a particle being created per frame. Since there's 30 frames per second, that's 30 balls every single second. What if we divide it by 10? So one divided by 10. One image every 10 frames. What if it's, it was one divided by 30? one image every 30 frames. Because there's three images, it's the same image every 30 frames. Cool, right? Okay, let's use this in our comp. Next, let's create the third and final particle system by copying and pasting the medium one, and we can add our bitmap sequence to it. Copy, paste. Let's change the name to large particles. 
connect the background and hit 2 on our viewer. And we can turn off this by hitting Control P. Let's go ahead and bring in a loader, LD. Choose the snowflakes. Here's six different snowflakes. So I'm just going to take the first one. Hit OK. Go to the particle system. Change the style to bitmap. Particle birth time and hook this up. And don't forget to hit loop on the loader. And let's tweak the settings because we copy and pasted the, the particles. And the color settings, I'm going to choose a medium gray and bring down the alpha. Next, the size, I'm going to choose 0 0.5. And I don't need any blur. Let's increase the number. And lifespan can be 150. Now, the key thing here is that because these are shapes and not just blobs, we can actually give them spin rotation and you'll be able to see it. Go down to spin, z axis minus one, variance five. So now you can see that they're spinning. Now we're in the home stretch. Let's add a vignette, some color desaturation and grain, and then we can add titles. To add a vignette, I'm going to take a background node, connect it to the merge, give it a darker green color, and add a mask, ELP. Change the shape, give it some soft edge and invert, and view this in the viewer. Bring down the blend and the merge. Next time I'm going to create a color corrector node, CC, and desaturate our colors just a bit. Next, we're going to add some film grain. And after that, media out node. Let's go ahead and choose all these nodes and hit Control P to enable them. And let's view the media out node. Desaturation looks a little too much. I'll turn it back on. Okay, so we recreated the original template from scratch for learning purposes. Let's say we're comfortable with all the tools and techniques and settings so far. Lesson one, two, three, we're feeling good, confident. Let's take this to the next level. Let's change the comp to white and blue for somebody's birthday in winter and then we'll add some titles. How do we do that? Let's go to the background node. We're gonna change this to blue. And in the fast noise, we chose some green color, so we could change that as well. And then in the vignette, we also had a green color. We can change that. Let's go to the background node, and instead of a solid color, let's take a gradient. And this gradient, I want this to be vertical. Like that. Let's view this. And then I'm going to choose white on top and choose blue on the bottom. Upside down. Let's do that. Good. I want more white than blue. That looks good. All right, let's go back to media out, final node, view that, looking good. So you can take a lot of these free templates uh, that I upload and you can change them uh, in any way you want. Let's blend down the snowflakes because now instead of a sort of Christmassy theme, we're going more with a birthday theme. We don't need that to be too prominent. We can also turn down the medium size particles down a little bit. Let's go ahead and add some titles. Let's take a text node.
and view the merge. Okay, copy and paste. Connect the merge, change the word. Birthday, view this in the viewer, bring it down. Now, the first one does not need to be this large. And then I can move both of them up. Copy. Paste. Connect the merge. View the merge. And let's say your friend Trevor. Smith, that's his birthday, change the font, and bring this down, reduce the size, and tracking, and then one more, copy and paste. And here, say from John All right, change the font. View this. And change the size. Okay. So you can create texts, titles on top of these templates, and you can make them animated, and you can do whatever you want. If you guys want to learn how to do motion graphics uh, titles, and work with these templates uh let me know in the comments and we can do uh, some animation for these as well i hope you like this tutorial happy compositing and i will see you in the next one bye